What's up everybody? Tommy here, Math Productions. And this video is a session zero. Um, so for anybody that plays tabletop role-playing games, that's probably familiar. Um, that's probably the most applicable um, genre of gaming that might use a session zero. Uh, but what a session zero is, is it's a starting point before you start the game where basically all the mechanics, the rules, the lore, play styles, player characters, uh, basically all the foundations needed to be able to jump right into the game and get going, you get all those things completed, accomplished, and established. I do intend to start a new playthrough series. I haven't yet decided if we're going to officially end uh, the original playthrough series. We got to a fun uh, point in the game where we covered all the initial stuff, how you can complete it quick, uh, quickly, but we didn't really get into the uh, the real meat or the, the fun part of the main quest line, right? We definitely didn't see it all the way through, through to the end, um, but a lot of us have played through that a lot, right? And I also even have a ton of tutorial videos that show at all those initial uh, cities, different quests and things you can do to get started to really catch up on all the lore and everything. Uh, so I feel like the foundations are covered and yes, I do want to see it through to the end game to show off some little tips and tricks at that point. Um, I kind of want to test out a bunch of new mods. That's really what this all stems from. That original playthrough, a lot of the mods that I currently really enjoy uh, either weren't available or were in initial versions. Um, and at this point I want to use the updated versions. I want to change up the settings a little bit as much as I love uh, Starvival and I really debated starting NASA Punk on this one. Uh, we're just going to use a couple immersion type mods and settings based mods to tweak um, our gameplay experience and difficulty level. We're not going to use an actual gameplay overhaul in this series. Um, but I am going to role play out a specific type of character. Uh, we're not going to do a bunch of voices and stuff like that. That's not my style, even when I play tabletop role-playing games. Uh, but we will kind of have a, a basis for thinking uh, for our character as we go through with this new series, playing with these new mods. Again, on screen is the full, complete load order. There are 69 mods. I have them in order of priority for what I think makes most sense in a load order. Uh, and if you slow down the video and you want to try this along with me, we're actually going to troubleshoot it together because I've played and tested a little bit of it, but I haven't gone that in depth. That's what I wanted to use this series for. Uh, so we're going to find out together if this load order actually works. But the way it's set up, I think it's going to be a ton of fun. We're using the uh, Crimson Fleet Fast Start and we're going to role play out an X spacer who had signed on with Argos to try to get away from that shadier lifestyle, wanted to do things legit and above board, got thrust into this conflict, and uh, instead of jumping on the frontier and heading back to Constellation, I, I like to imagine that my headcanon, what we did is we took out a, a spacer, we took their outfit, we jumped up on board and pirated their spaceship from them, and uh, we took off under the guise of now being part of that original Crimson Fleet crew. We've made our way to the key to kind of infiltrate them. And now we are at a uh, kind of a moral conundrum internally as a character. Because again, in my head canon for this character, as an ex-spacer, I like to imagine that at one point when the character became a spacer, like they had bigger aspirations in that lifestyle of one day being a uh, known member of the Crimson Fleet, a high-ranking member maybe of the Crimson Fleet, um, had heard of Crix and Crix's legacy and is all about that, that life of glory at that point, right? Um, but then X spacer I like to imagine that things didn't work out the way that they had hoped, so they decided, you know what, instead of continuing down here, death is probably a likely outcome for me. Let me go ahead try to do things right, let me get a job as a miner. Um, but again, getting thrown back in, being able to have access to the key, being looked at now as one of their own in regards to the Crimson Fleet, that moral uh, predicament, do they want to stay the uh, righteous path, if you will, and try to do good and no longer be about that lifestyle of malicious intent? Or are they going to succumb to the temptation of falling back into that lifestyle and seeking the fame, the riches, the glory, no matter the cost, right? 
But uh, for our background, X Spacer, for our traits, we're going with three of my favorite traits. I think they're three of the best traits in the game without adding mods. Empath, I absolutely love how it impacts um, your buffs and debuffs, depending on if your companions are happy or not with what you do in the world. Uh, it gives it like a mental component uh, in exchange for not having a fatigue component. Uh, I really like Empath. Number two is Taskmaster. It's very beneficial to be able to repair your ship and the 50% increase to the cost of crew, negligible. Wanted is super awesome in my opinion. It uh, fits well with the role that I'm trying to play with this character um, because maybe people know that he actually isn't one of the Crimson Fleet and they're trying to take him down. Or maybe it's from some stuff he did back before he tried to go on the right path. Uh, Wanted will bring people out to try to get you and you can pay them away, you can fight them away. If you fight them away and win, ships, weapons, armor, etc. I do believe that the adoring fan and the kid stuff traits are worthy of being in the top three depending on your start and your character. If I was going to play a character that was starting not as a Crimson Fleet, then uh, perhaps Adoring Fan would have been in the top three as opposed to one of the others. And kid stuff is great, not just for a little bit of backstory for your character and some fun interactions across the settled systems, uh, but they give you some super awesome rewards, a weapon, a recipe, a ship, um, and you cannot get those things without those traits. So those are two other traits that I would say are worthy of a top three depending on your um, play style. Altogether, that is my top five best traits in the game. Traits don't really add too much. Backgrounds, only some really give some extra dialogue. They aren't that impactful for the actual gameplay. Uh, but again, when you're playing through a character, or you're trying to play through a character long term, in my opinion, it's a lot more fun if you have an idea going into it of a character type that you really want to try to play. Uh, you can change it up in the middle, you can change it up at the end, you can change it up right after you start. But it's always fun, in my opinion, to have that starting point for that character that you want to play. Now what I'm showing you on screen is after the load order is set and the game is launched, we need to get our settings uh, set up how we want to play. We are going to play a little bit uh, of a higher difficulty, not exactly hardcore because there are things I'm setting up in our favor. Uh, a lot of things I'm going to keep as normal. Uh, but you'll see here the full list of the settings that we're going to be playing with. And if you want to play along with us, feel free to match these settings. We end up with a plus 19% for our XP slider. Um, not super increased, but I feel like that's fair for overall the settings that we chose here. With the uh, sustenance turned on though, we are going to go, uh, once we finish up with our settings here, back into our items, our eight items specifically. We're going to need something to eat or drink, hopefully we got something. Otherwise, our first order of business is probably just gonna be dock at the key and uh, try to go and get some goods. Because of the way that the Crimson Fleet Fast Start mod works, um, um, a handful of the initial quests are auto-completed at the start, and you do get those credit rewards for those um, completed quests once everything catches up. So we will have a little bit of money starting out. We just have the basic pirate outfit and uh, spacesuit. We have one pistol and uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the series to come. Again, we have 69 mods that we're going to be talking about the way and showing off along the way. And uh, if you like this video, I hope you press the like button. If you like the idea of this series, I hope you subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think. Take care, everyone.